morning, everyone. Charlie here. How's it going? We're going to talk about regulation NIMS or NMS, and this is for the CT plan. This is the one where Gary Gensler and the SEC has been going back and forth with commenters and slapping the beach. Okay, so recap so far the SEC approved a modified version of the CT plan, fixing many conflicts of interest, implementing a specific timeline, and we looked at the management of the LLC last time. And now know that the non-self-regulatory organizations, or SRO, you're going to hear that term a lot in this filing, SRO, will have a two-year term limit and will allow for a fresh set of ideas for managing the plan. Basically, they're trying to get the old ways of SROs basically having a monopoly over the decision-making when it comes to these big, big filings. And they're going to let some outside influence come in and try to help the cause, which is why we've been seeing these comments going back and forth. So the SROs heavily oppose many provisions of this SEC modified filing because normally the procedure works like this. The SEC doesn't like something in the filing, so they file for an amendment and then that's approved by the SRO, or I'm sorry, an amendment is filed by the SRO and then until it meets the SEC's um, standards, it would be approved at that point. But this time, there was no amendment filed. The SEC just took it and said, this is garbage. And then they rewrote a lot of provisions. And basically, the entire structure of this filing is like you get a, a section that they changed. They tell you what they changed. And they tell you who, who liked it, who didn't like it, and then their decision in the end. That's basically the filing structure so far. So it's pretty easy to follow. So I think doing this in small videos will be very helpful. And I have created a playlist. If you wanted to, if you're like just joining in on the middle of this, um, I will have a playlist set up so you can get caught up. But this is basically a recap of everything so far. So just pointing that out. So now that we know that non-SROs will have a voice and can influence the management of this uh, CT plan, let's see the categories of the non-SROs and who they are allowed to be affiliated with. So categories of non-SRO voting representatives. This is on page 62. One non-SRO self-regulatory organization voting representative will be selected from each of the following. An institutional investor, a broker dealer with a predominantly retail investor customer base, a broker dealer with a predominantly institutional investor customer base, a securities market data vendor that is not affiliated or associated with a member, broker dealer, or investment advisor with a third party client. That is huge. Um, an issuer of NMS stock, that is not affiliated or associated with a member, broker, dealer, or investment advisor with third party clients. And then a retail representative. Then we have Super Note 244, which basically says for the purposes of this plan, a retail representative is an individual who represents the interests of retail investors, has experience working with or on behalf of retail investors, has the requisite background and professional experience to understand the interest of retail investors, the work of the operating committee of the company, and the role of market data in the U.S. equity market. Bad ass and is not affiliated with a member or broker dealer. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so I'm continuing on here. This is the comment response. So one commenter states it is not against the proposal of the non SRO voting representatives, but argues that the representative's ability to introduce new and useful innovation to reform the SIP should be emphasized. Another commenter expresses support, in particular, for the inclusion of an institution, uh, institutional investor such as an asset manager on the operating committee. One commenter opposes the proposed restriction that would prohibit the non-SRO voting representative representing issuers from being affiliated with an SRO, a broker dealer, or an investment advisor. The commenter argues that such a limitation would eliminate a significant portion of qualified issuer representatives with the industry experience necessary to be effective non-SRO members and would unreasonably discriminate against ETF issuers as they are typically affiliated with a broker dealer or investment advisor, denying representation to a significant segment of the market. This is like one of the only times I've ever seen ETF in a filing. What the hell's going on here? And I swear, this is, this is, this is all gravy. Like it's all looking good, but until action is seen in the market, don't get titties chewed too jacked. But this is pretty cool seeing the comment response. So basically to sum this one up, one commenter does not want the proposed restriction uh, that would prohibit the non-SRO voting representatives representing issuers from being affiliated with an SRO, broker dealer, or an investment advisor. They feel like that would eliminate a significant portion of qualified issuer representatives. 
Um, no, just, just the main ones <laughs> that are manipulative. Okay, so continuing on, although some commenters object to the restriction the securities market data vendor representative and the issuer representative cannot be affiliated with SROs, broker dealers, and investment advisors with third-party clients, the commission continues to believe that these restrictions are appropriate. In other words, get wrecked, you bitch. These restrictions would operate to prevent certain affiliates of SROs, broker dealers, or investment advisors from gaining additional representation on the operating committee by virtue of their affiliations. Amen. Under the CT plan, SROs would have two thirds of the votes on the operating committee. Broker dealers would have two representatives on the operating committee and institutional investors would have one representative on the operating committee. Allowing a person from an issuer or market data vendor affiliated with an SRO to serve as a non SRO would increase SRO representation and correspondingly diminish the representation of non SROs on the operating committee. Amen, brother. So what that means basically under the CT plan, they're saying that they're, they're outlining the C the SRO influence on votes. Right. And then they're saying, if we were to allow a person from an ETF, like if we were to allow an e ETF issuer or market data vendor affiliated with an SRO to serve as a non SRO rep, that would further create conflicts of interest with the SROs because <laughs> I mean, with ETF creation, that's literally it, we see in the market. ETF manipulation. It's from SROs, right? Self-regulatory organizations. That's where they allow this to happen. So this should eliminate, hopefully, a lot of that by not allowing an ETF issuer or market data vendor to represent the non-SROs because it would diminish the representation of the non-SROs. So basically, SROs cannot be affiliated with the data vendor for the CT plan. They can also not be affiliated with broker dealers. And they cry like beaches again, because sex slaps their ass. Now under the plan, SROs have two third votes on the operating committee. Broker dealers would have one representative on the committee. And the SEC argues that by allowing an SRO to be affiliated with the data vendor, it would diminish representation from the non SROs in a nutshell. Conclusion. The commission therefore concludes that including representatives from these categories of non-SRO voting representatives as set forth in the CT plan as proposed will provide a diversity of views on the operating committee such that perspectives from key stakeholders in matters related to equity market data are heard. Accordingly, the commission is approving the provision of Article 4, Section 4.2b that enumerates the categories of non-SRO voting representatives as proposed. Damn Damn, damn. In a nutshell, SROs just got bitch slapped again. It looked like, again, it looks good on paper. Trust me, I'm not naive when it comes to this, but so far so good. We have, we're about a eh, fifth of the way through the filing. Next time we're gonna take a look at term limits and a few other things. Talk to you later. <laughs>